Hi, this is Dr. Clyde. This is a brief description of my upcoming Stanford Continuing Studies course entitled Nutrition, a Personalized Approach. Much of what we eat, we can choose entirely what we want to eat with a perfectly healthy physiological response from our body to that food. So long as we engineer what we're doing through our day so that it enters the bloodstream at a rate that our lean tissue can absorb it as opposed to entering quickly where it spills over into body fat chronically from our eating pattern. Think donuts, soda, candy, which enter the bloodstream really quickly, but we tend to get cravings for, and even if we're shifting our diet to one that is very low in carbohydrate that avoids those entirely, then the question becomes, are we meeting our needs? Is just eating fats all day long with a bunch of protein is that enough? What are the variety of fats that we need? Do we ever need a carbohydrate, like when we're exercising? And the reality is that even in ketosis, where you wouldn't need dietary carbohydrate, that exercise can change that. And without some carbohydrate for the workouts themselves, your brain will still stimulate a lean tissue loss that works against a body composition goal that you might have, like staying low in body fat. It won't make any sense to you. Why? With all this exercise and restricted eating patterns, you're still not getting the body composition, the fitness levels that you're after. It just doesn't make sense. And the harder you try, the more elusive these goals seem to be. And the answer is actually quite clear, that there's two aspects to our nutrition, and we need to pay attention to both. There's a bottom maintenance layer to how we eat for meeting basic physiological needs, getting enough protein to produce the proteins that our, our cells need to make every second of every day of your entire life, meeting that minimum set of needs for that. The carbohydrate that at all of the inhibitory neuron types in your head will want even when you're in deep ketosis, and the liver can produce that, but exercise will take it away. And so then all of a sudden, uh, ketosis can becomes complicated if you're very active. Now, most people are not looking for ketosis, and so they have a significant amount of carbohydrate in their diet, but that has to be managed so that the digestion rate is slow enough that the carbohydrates enter your lean tissue as carbohydrate instead of spilling over to body fat chronically. And then there's the issue of the dietary fats, the omega-3, 6, and 9. To what extent are animal fats fine? Turns out that healthy animals produce healthy fats in the foods that we get from them, whether it's milk, eggs, or their tissue. And so... These issues um, are actually quite simple to address, but take time to tease apart the things that we've heard and read throughout our lives that we're struggling with coordinating. And in this class, we'll chart out through the homework assignments what we're learning in the lectures so that you have a simple blueprint to follow to achieve your goals using the foods you like engineered time-wise in your day and together with other foods so that they have the impact that you're after. The bottom line is we need balance of the food groups and our maintenance layer to meet our basic cellular needs. And above that is the energy layer that can be all fats when you're do if you're doing keto or a higher fat diet. It could be mostly uh, carbohydrate if it's low processed and combined with foods that slow down its digestion rate. Or it could have a significant uh, a portion of protein in there up to what the research indicates uh, is safe before there's a potential downside from that. So the maintenance layer has to be balanced regardless of what energy layer is on top. That could be any food that digests slow enough to be used as energy and that enables any diet, whether it's high fat, high carbohydrate, some combination to uh, work because it provides your maintenance needs and sufficient calories to keep you going to maximize lean tissue growth or fat burning, whichever is your goal, or both, where that lean tissue growth or healing would then push you towards greater quality of life in terms of mobility, fitness as a component to performance if you're athletic, or staying healthy even if you're absolutely not athletic at all, either way. In this course, We'll go through each food group, starting with an overview and ending with each person having a plan in hand that can launch them forward to uh, finally, with very small adjustments to what they're doing, finally getting the benefit from all the hard work that they've been doing with their nutrition thus far.